Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. This is a verse we need today more than potentially ever. There's crazy things going on in the church and in the world, and it's easy to focus upon those, but Paul gives us a great challenge here. And you might think, okay, well, Paul lived in a different time. The church was in a different situation. Yes, there were challenges, but today we may have more daunting challenges. Well, what I would say is think about the church 40 years ago. Think about the blessings that we have in the church right now. 40 years ago, the priestly fraternity of St. Peter did not exist. We didn't have Catholic apologetics like we do. There was very limited emphasis on Christian and Catholic entertainment. Think about all the resources that we have as Catholics that we didn't have 40 years ago. We have all these apostolates and apps and different things like that. One, the Ascension app, right, with Bible in a Year, the number one app in the world on Yahoo News. Imagine secular people going through and being like, what is this Ascension app? Just a few days ago, Chris Pratt announced that he was doing Bible in a Year with Father Mike Schmitz. How incredible is that? One of the biggest actors in the world doing Bible in a Year? And just think about the footprint that that's had and the impact that it's had. As of December of 2022, there have been 430 million downloads. That's a year outdated. Imagine what's happened in the last year. Probably half a billion downloads at this point. Incredible to see this. Then we have conferences like Seek 2024 that just wrapped up last Friday with 20,000 college students listening to speakers who love Jesus. I've been twice and it is so encouraging. Just the zeal and the fire and the passion that people have there is incredible. Totally in line with church teaching. So while it may be discouraging to see some people being promoted in the church who don't follow the teachings fully, we see those at seek, the ones that are reaching college students, like Bishop Fernandez of Columbus, who just encouraged fasting for meat on every Friday of the year in his diocese. Kim Zimmer, who lives a chaste life with same-sex attraction. Dr. Scott Hahn, Dr. Tim Gray, Father Gregory Pine, David B. Wright from 40 Days for Life, Chris Stefanik, Bishop Cousins, who's leading the Eucharistic Revival, of course, Father Mike, and so many others. 20,000 college students, imagine how many lives are being changed and the virtues that are being brought forth from those students. Was that happening 40 years ago? No, that wasn't. Was Bible in a Year happening 40 years ago? No, Catechism in a Year. All these things that are new and really bringing life to so many people who have been, I'm sure, attacked by the culture. Two of Six Tours and other pilgrimage organizations bringing Catholics to holy sites around the world. Obviously that happened decades ago as well, but on a greater scale now than ever before. It is so encouraging to see this, and it's something that we need to think about, to think about the good things. Obviously there's scandals going on, and those are tough, but we need to focus on what Paul says, whatever is good, whatever is true, whatever is lovely. I remember actually one time I was driving to work and I was frustrated from something Anne Marie did, my wife, and I was, you know, listening to the scriptures and that came on, whatever is good, think of that. And that immediately changed my mindset because I was thinking, oh man, I wish you would have done this. I'm frustrated you did this, but that just changed my mind around. Really, <laughs> God speaking in that way as he speaks to the scriptures. An important thing to remember is that Christians were able to transform the world due to what? Their love. Julian the Apostate said, Christians support not only their poor, but ours as well. All men see that our people lack aid from us. It was through the virtue and charity that we had for others that people saw we were different, that saw the Christians were different. And I think that by reflecting more on Philippians, we can have that perspective, that sheer and joy in our eyes. Think about children. You see the joy in their eyes, and that is so beautiful to see. And think the opposite. You can see when someone's having a hard time by just the, the gloss over their eyes, the sadness of their eyes. That's what we need to strive to be, that people see us and they're like, something's different about them. I've said so many times before, we need to be the light that shines in the darkness. One of my favorite Bible verses. And the light is something different. We get that by focusing on Christ. We didn't convert people by being the angriest group, by being the most critical group. Obviously, we have doctrine and teaching and sin is what it is. But is that something we dwell upon and harden our heart? I'll close with Father Ripperger. 
He says, it doesn't matter what any prelate in the church does. It shouldn't affect your faith, your virtue, or your perspective. Father Ripper loves tradition. He loves the church. It's so sad to see these things. I'm sure that's not encouraging to him, but this is the right perspective to focus on Jesus. Nothing they do should impact us. Obviously, it's easier said than done. That's why we have to rely upon God's grace. But look to scripture. Maybe read scripture more in time that you would be looking at all the scandals going on in the church. Go to adoration. Pray the rosary. Go to mass. These are things that we can do that will get us closer to Jesus rather than distract us. Obviously, I'm not saying we should never look at anything, have a proper balance, but I think a lot of us today are focused more on the scandal and it really blinds our view. So I hope in 2024, where I can imagine different things will continue to persist in the church, we need to focus on Jesus and listen to St. Paul. Please like and share this video. I hope that you're having a great 2024. Comment below with your favorite thing that you've seen happen in the church, because I'd love to follow up on a video and be like, these are the great things going on in the church that I haven't listed in this video. Have a blessed day and God love you.